Is the problem with you is you're whining like a little fucking baby. What's going on, fam? It's your boy, Papa Swolio, with another episode of Ask Papa Swolio. I am here with my fuck your pink drink mug. Uh, 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 uh. Mm, thank you so much for asking your questions. Remember to like, subscribe, follow the gains, follow the beard, follow the hair, and make sure to use the hashtag AskPapaSwoyo in the comments below. Ask your questions to be featured right here on the show. Let's just jump right into the first question because we got a lot to get through today. Oh, 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 oh. My Zebra Life. Papa Swolio, for a disabled person and complete beginner, what would you recommend to build muscle and strength around joints? yoga yoga is the best way to start because it's your body weight you don't need to go to a gym you don't need fancy equipment you can watch videos on youtube on swolnormous x and our yoga studio you can check out yoga classes anywhere and everywhere especially online and it is great for different ranges of motion it's great for multi-planar movements moving front to back moving side to side rotating and if you're disabled you can modify yoga in so many different ways there's even chair yoga classes so you can find something that would fit your capacity so long as you're cleared for exercise yoga 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 Ashley Ann, Papa Swolio, so curious about the wallpaper in these videos. What does it say? Well, if you haven't noticed, I have tons and tons of actually, it's note cards with permanent marker on them. So those are all individual index cards and they all have different sayings, different things that inspire me, whether it's a quote, whether it's something that I wanna remind myself and they're all over the wall, uh, pretty much covering it corner to corner. So it's not a wallpaper. I mean, I guess it is, it's pieces of paper that cover a wall, but it's actually, individual index cards three by five that i just wrote with permanent marker again inspirational stuff and i'm more than happy to show a couple of those things now and again but it's just tons of different quotes tons of different things from myself from famous people and everything in between sarah taylor what are your thoughts on resistance band training versus free weights if you really want to define free weights free weights means training that you're not locked into place. A machine keeps the movement on a specific track, right? It's designed to move a certain way and that's the only way that that machine will move. Bands are a little bit of a combination between free weights and machines. They're much more free weight than they are machine, but it provides progressive overload, meaning the more you stretch the band, the more resistance you'll get out of it. Now there's different bands. There are bands that can provide hundreds and hundreds of pounds of resistance. So. You can't say that, oh, I'm too big, I wanna get bigger, I shouldn't be using resistance bands. There are bands out there that can provide a ton of resistance. However, you have to have a proper door anchor, you have to have a proper support system in order to use it properly. And a lot of times these apparatuses in which the bands come uh, in terms of whether it's a door unit or it's some type of system, a lot of times it might be hard to set up or to get the right angle that you're trying to for a certain body part. But they're very versatile. The great thing about bands is you can travel with them. The bands might only weigh a couple pounds, but can provide a couple hundred pounds of resistance. So I think they do have their place. I think they're great for doing corrective exercise. I think they're great for travel. I think they're great for even doing it in the gym. They're great for core training and you know rotation and providing that type of um, resistance. But nothing 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 replaces actually taking a weight and being able to control and move it through all the planes of motion and all different areas of your surroundings right being in complete control of what that weight what that actual apparatus does whether it's a kettlebell whether it's a dumbbell or a barbell your movement takes that in that direction okay the reason why bands can be beneficial is because you could change the angle of where that force is coming from. If you anchor from a high point, the resistance is coming from up there. Uh, if you anchor to a low point, the resistance is coming from down there. When you have a free weight, the earth is always pulling the weight straight down. So they have their place, great for travel, great for variety, but fundamentally your training should revolve the majority around complete free weights, whether it's barbell, dumbbell, kettlebells, and the like. Figgy Newton, Papa Swolio, cardio or no? H-I-I-T instead, hmm. high intensity interval training. I'm very, very tired of these acronyms because unfortunately most people that throw around the term HIT training don't know how to define it. People just use that term for anything where you're doing a movement and then it's a short period of time, right? When you're like exhausted lifting weights. So to use that and just explain and say yes or no, I agree or disagree, it depends on how the person that's using it is defining it. And there isn't a lot of education 
in the fitness industry, especially on social media, for people to use that word and have the definition be consistent across the board, right? We can't say, this is a door. People understand what a door is. When you say HIT training, a lot of people have different ideas of what high intensity interval training means. And that's a very gray area. You could define it with different types of workouts that would still fall under that category. So for me, I do cardio as a warm up to get my body temperature up, to get my body primed for exercise. I go on one of those rotating step mills for about 15 to 20 minutes before I exercise, before I do my specific warm up, before I do my upper body, lower body mobility, my yoga flow, whatever I'm doing that day for resistance training. But in terms of doing cardio for a workout, I would recommend something like an interval workout. I would recommend something like sprints, interval uh, sprints, whether you're doing incline sprints, hill sprints, stair work, that could be beneficial. But if you're not focused on your nutrition, your resistance training and your yoga, don't worry about cardio yet. Make sure you get those components really locked down and then you can sprinkle in extra cardio on top. Just going for a walk is cardio. Don't worry so much about cardio in terms of that being the main focus of all your weight loss and all your health and all your fitness training, but that could be a component just like everything else in your training. May MJS. Would you ever date a chubby person? Well, because I have found my person and Mama Swolio is fucking amazing, um, I wouldn't date anyone else, period. However, would I date a chubby person? I mean, chubby usually means not that healthy or not taking their health that seriously or not exercising as much as they should. So in terms of being attracted, I'm generally not attracted to people that have extra body fat because that just does not scream health to me. Now, if you're talking about, and I will categorize chubby as my opinion of chubby might not be your opinion of chubby. So that's a very subjective thing to ask. And so don't get insulted anyone, although I can't control whether you do get insulted or not. And I can't say I actually care if you get insulted because it's my subjective opinion, but I like someone who looks like they're in shape. They don't have to be shredded. I don't need six pack abs on a female, but the person needs to be taking care of themselves and put their health and their fitness and their training a top priority. And if you don't look the part, then you're not for Papa. Sean McRoberts, Papa Swolio, losing weight and staying active has many hurdles for the severely overweight and out of shape. And fitness culture can be often intimidating for those unaccustomed to it. As a man who favors an over the top persona, do you ever worry that you might be scaring off those that would likely seek to encourage, that I would likely seek to encourage? In other words, do, do I worry that my delivery might discourage some people? No, because there are plenty of people out there that want to put their arm around someone and coddle them and be like, oh, it's okay, you can do it, you can, you can do it, you're a wonderful person, you're beautiful, fat acceptance, body positivity, right, all that bullshit. I don't approach it like that because that's not who I am. That's not my delivery. So I can't control what people feel as a result of my content. And I put that out there. I am going to say things my way. If you're insulted, it's on you. If you get discouraged from my content, that's not my fault. You're discouraged for another reason. If you're taking it personally, why are you taking it personally? If you're getting scared off, why are you getting scared off? There are, the vast majority of people are not scared off, are not discouraged. I'm doing much more good than harm. And that usually comes down to the individual that is receiving it and how they interpret it. So I could never in a million years, no matter how I deliver my content, whether I'm super, super nice or calling you a fat fuck, get off the couch, go work out, no matter how I deliver my content, someone is not going to, it's not gonna resonate with everyone. So no matter what I do, so instead of, and, and this goes for everyone else that's creating content, doing whatever, don't pander to anyone. Be yourself because there's always going to be a thumbs down. There are always gonna be people that don't like your content. There are always gonna be people that aren't inspired, that you don't connect with. But I am speaking to the people that I do connect with, which is why I do the way, I do things the way that I do. I'm authentic to myself. I deliver my content the way I want to deliver it. And my audience, will be attracted to me and anyone else that is not ready to handle it or doesn't want the truth or doesn't like that kind of blunt approach, you can go and find someone else that will pander to your shortcomings. But I am here to tell you the truth the way it should be without political correctness, without any kind of those tiptoeing around the facts. I want to tell you exactly the way it is. You deserve to not be pandered to. You deserve to not be coddled. You deserve the truth and you deserve real shit.
Dan Palmer, Papa Solio, what are the keys to success when starting a personal fitness blog or using other social media outlets, Instagram, Facebook, etc.? Peace, ya big beach. Well, thanks, Dan. I am a big beach. <laughs> what are the keys to success? Um, it's consistency, it's finding your true voice, it's being relentlessly authentic and consistent. I learned everything from scratch, whether it comes to YouTube, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, ads, all that stuff, I've learned it from scratch myself. I've had some insight and some help along the way, but I've put in the time to develop my own voice, to produce the content that people respond to. Make sure that you do whatever you do for your audience, right? Do it selflessly, do it authentically, do it for them to help other people. Because if you do it with the right intent, people are gonna respond to it. The reason why people respond to my content, even though I'm harsh and I'm blunt and I'm upfront, is that I do it for the right reasons and people know my reason. People know why I'm doing things the way I'm doing. And there are always gonna be people that don't like my delivery, but that's fine, that's on them. And the keys to success is just putting in the time, learning, and delivering your content, your message, in the way that people want to absorb it. So whether it is Instagram, whether it's YouTube, whether it's Facebook, whether it's the podcast that I do, the reason why I do all those different things is because one, I'm trying to figure out what works best for me and for my audience, but people are everywhere. Some people like to listen, some people like to read, some people like to watch a video, some people just like text. So I do all of it and it's a lot of volume and it's breaking through the noise. So you really have to just do, do, do and execute, less talk, less thinking, and just try different things. And above all, just be true to yourself because if you're not, you're gonna get exposed. People are going to smell it. It's like that sixth sense that people have on social media. When someone is full of shit, they can just feel it. They can feel it when someone's full of shit. And you don't wanna be one of those people that rub the wrong way, right? Just do you and deliver it consistently and on all platforms, just do everything. Do as much as you possibly can. Papa Hubs, Papa Swolio, hey, what up? Is it advisable to do accessory lifts with your main lift on the training day or should the accessories be done on another training day? I'm assuming you mean things like single joint movements like a barbell curl um, on a back day and a tricep extension on a chest day. Is that what you mean by accessories? You didn't really define what your um, what your idea of an accessory is, but you can do both. If you're doing a total body workout, depends on your volume, depends on your overall plan and experience and all those different concepts. If you're doing a total body workout, you're going to have less time to do individual single joint stuff. You should stick to more macro movements like pushing, big basic pushing movements like a bench press, like a row, like a pull up, uh, like a squat, like a deadlift. But if you're doing a different split like chest and back or you're doing an arm day, depending on again, what your training protocol is, um, it could be appropriate to do accessory lifts on the same day, but it really depends on what your program structure looks like. Cayute. Papa Solio, what are the best exercises to grow shoulders and back without putting a lot of emphasis on traps? What I think you are mistaking is the upper traps from the middle and the lower traps. You want to hit the middle and lower traps. So if you're talking about up here as the traps, for those that don't know, there's the upper trapezius, the middle, and the lower trapezius. So the middle and the lower that will pull the shoulder blades back and down, that's what you do want to focus on. So. To grow your shoulders, you wanna make sure you're not doing shit like fucking upright rows that can cause a lot of issues with the shoulders. Standard lateral raise, doing front raise are great. Focus on your rear deltoid, uh, doing things like pull downs, activating your lower trapezius, doing some scapular depressions are great to activate the lower traps before doing any kind of back work. That way you're activating the right muscles during the training rather than just jumping in and having bad form. A lot of people, when they do things, for example, like cable rows, when they're doing a cable row, they're shrugging up as they're pulling in. That's a super common mistake because it's very, very common to have compensations and have that upper trapezius overactivated. So people tend to shrug up and elevate when they should be depressing the scapula. So doing those types of uh, cueing movements before you actually start with your resistance training is extremely effective. And um, I would recommend adding things like a floor cobra, adding things like scapular depressions, doing wide grip pull downs, pull ups, training yourself, doing negatives for pull ups that will help activate the middle and lower trapezius. That way, during all your training, you'll have less, um, I guess, invasion of the upper traps with any kind of movement that you choose to do. Knowledge. You got one of those little couple dots over that A there. I like it. Anyway, Papa Swolio, thoughts on fasting? I love it. 
I think people should shut their mouths. I think people eat way too much. I think fasting is a natural part of human survival. That's why we are able to go without eating for days and sometimes weeks because we are designed to be active, to be hunting when there is no food available. We're not supposed to have supermarket with tons and tons of food all the time. We're supposed to be without food and we're supposed to be without food and still able to function because we're supposed to hunt food when we're hungry. So we have way too much food. I think people should definitely stop fucking eating so much. Fast Max 13. Papa Swolio, I do a lot of strongman training and I hear you talk about yoga a lot. I have never done it. Do you recommend it? And in what ways does it help with lifting? It helps with everything from lifting to your psychological approach. It helps with everything. I don't care if you're a power lifter, a long distance runner, you are just an old person, you are a young person, you're a college student, you're a nurse, you're a lawyer. Every single person should have a consistent regular yoga practice. It will help in all aspects with your lifting. Not only does it calm the central nervous system and it helps balance out the sympathetic activity from that kind of high intense uh, lifting, it will help balance out all your musculature, it'll help balance out those stabilizers, it'll help activate muscles in your posterior chain like your glutes, it'll help for strength, it'll help loosen up the hip flexors, so it'll improve your posture, both static and dynamic posture, which will absolutely help with your training as well as reduce your risk of injury um, and just your overall movement and quality of life. So yoga, 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 I could not emphasize practicing yoga enough for everyone watching. Well, we did it, fam. We did it. Cheers. Cheers. We crushed out another episode of Ask Papa Swolio. Thank you so much for being here. If you want your question featured here, make sure to ask your question in the comments below and use the hashtag Ask Papa Swolio. If you did not yet like this video, obviously hit the like button. And if you did not yet subscribe, obviously subscribe so you can get more beard action and get your question answered and upvote other people's questions. Go in the comments and hit those thumbs up and let me know what you want to hear about most on the next episode of Ask Papa Swallow. Until then, enjoy your coffee. Peace out, fam. Later. Click the link, motherfucker. Click the link. Click the link. Watch another video. Like and subscribe. I know you want to. You know you want to. Come on. Everyone knows you want to. You love Papa Swolio. You love the man bun. You love the sick fucking gains. You love it. Oh, oh, oh. You love it. Oh, 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 oh.